What's up, motherfuckers? Marcy Bonazari here with another episode of We'll Name It Later Show with the one and only, my great friend, motherfucking Brent Hines. What's up, Marcy? Thanks, thanks for having me thanks on the show. Here, thanks for having me on the show. <laughs> thanks for being here, man. Talk Brent show. is here tonight with his band, Fiend Without a Face. Man. Yes. And uh, I heard sound check, and we're going we're gonna to show some beat clips on that. They sound amazing, man. Even though your monitors are working. You yeah, yeah. Are... Well, you know, it was, it was more of a ring out situation. We ring the monitors out, you know. Got to <laughs> ring them out. Like, you know, they, they got wet. Man, I love this band, man. Cool. I mean, I, 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 you know, like this band, I've been in this band before I was in Mastodon. I started this band like 94 or some shit. And just, just me and my friends, uh, Steve and Troy started it. And then... Uh, and uh, Troy just became kind of difficult through the years and got Danny in there, who was Dwayne's teacher. And then Danny couldn't make it. And then Dwayne said he could make it. So I've, I kind of had a, an accidental revolving door of drummers as of late. But that's all good. As long as people like to, like to, you know, just, you got to, you, you got to, if it's worth, you know, it's worth doing, you got to suffer for it a little bit, you know? Yeah, man. Like, yeah. like yeah, you gotta pay you know, nothing comes for free. You've never been spending you gotta you sweat do, a do you? You got to There's all these levels of, of success, but, like, as far as I'm concerned, Fiend hit the top in the 90s. Yeah, man. You know, we're all, we're, we, we just, it's just a kind of a band that I just like doing. You know, my, my buddies, we have a good time. That's a good, yeah, it's a good time. I mean, you sound great. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's a, totally, it's a different side of you. Yeah. You know? And yeah. it's, uh, it's I, w I was really. I love the keys involved. Super, super influenced by, like, uh, the cramps and Reverend Horton Heat, and uh, and that kind of thing when I was young, and 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 that's how this band kind of stemmed. That's how this band kind of formulated is by me being so influenced by the Stray Cats, and uh, and that kind of stuff, you know. But your your range of influence is so dang wide, man. It has to be. It has. To, you're like you're yeah. one of those guys. You're I like me. I think yeah, you're like the fat kid thing. in the dot in on the buffet line. You like everything. I like it all. And you play well, it. Yeah, Salisbury steak and chicken fried steak. <laughs> That's right. And fried chicken and roast beef. Listen, man, you 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 know, not only do I consider you one of my dearest friends, but you are one of my favorite guitar players. You're one too. of my favorite guitar players. <laughs> Dude, you're 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 you're, 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 you're an actual assassin <laughs> with the fucking like a Frazetta painting with the you know, like the fucking you know the, Man, look, you're you an American icon, and the, your your style of playing and the complexity of it, the chicken picking, man, it's uh, there's just the roots coming out, and then you like you know pushing it with Mastodon, and you guys are incredibly unique. That last tour with Gojira, it literally just blew my mind. I ha I saw you in Houston, and I was blessed to see it in Austin the, the following night. Man. The compositions, the videos that just came up with the guy, it's just like, it's very humbling to hear someone, you know, doing that today. You guys are organic from yeah. from, from the drums to like Yeah, it wasn't amps. an overnight success or anything. Yeah, but still taking the tradition, to, it's almost a lost art what you're doing. It was, we, 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 we worked hard for what we have, you know, I mean, we fucking like, it's like I said, that shit went overnight. You know what I mean? No, we we still no. working for it. You it's know? so well deserved, man. Yeah. I I love everything that. Yeah, you yeah. I I feel like it came at the time where it, it, it like if it, it, you know it wasn't gonna happen, it was never gonna happen. Basically, like with uh with um with the exposure that you get from your own music, you know, like I get I feel like I get overexposed from some of my projects, and that's why I'm grateful to have these other projects that I can kind of not fall back on, but like just get involved with again and, and, uh, and, and, and mix it up with my homies. Go back on the road in the van, you know? Yeah, man. I could drive the van all day. You have a lot of love, Brent. I got a lot yeah, of love for people yeah, like, I'm yeah. at Texas, dude. I wasn't born in Texas, but I got here as fast as I could, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here, man. Look, I'm glad I, can't, to be here. I can't help but nerd out now a little bit. Nerd out. Like, being, a, being a guitar player at the yard, just cheers, man. It's hot as hell tonight. We have two yellow jackets. We we're going to start jackets. Hotter than 10. That's going to be the name of our side band. Top. We had two yellow jackets. Yeah. Let's talk about guitar, man. Let's do it. Let's talk about You got so much 
stuff, man. So much signature stuff. Yeah. I don't know where to begin. The amp, you know, you. The, well, I did that amp are, with Orange. Yeah. Back in the day, sold all those. Signed a Victory. Designed another amp with Victory called the Sheriff. Yes. Well, you have the right to remain silent. Are you getting told violations? But uh. Well, uh, you know, I, I, I've actually had a lot of love from people in the amp industry who have helped me out. Like, you know, like Alex Osher moved to Atlanta. He worked for Orange, and he, he made it possible. He made things possible. Yes. You know, like, brothers make shit possible for each other. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my, like, my, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's how it is. People, yeah. you help motherfuckers in this, in this industry. And, like, you know, your homies, like, I needed a gig on the 4th of, of Houston tonight, right? I didn't have one. I don't know what the hell I was gonna do. Yeah, and right. I, I, I put, yeah, like I, somehow I have it you, from, from friends helping, you know. Yeah, right. It was, it was, right. Yeah, Ron helped another friend that you know. Yeah, went, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a small world. Small world. Because I grew up with those people in Alabama, the guys that, that ended up helping out, Jake. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. serious. Like family, friends, and shit. That's that makes it beautiful, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That synergy is beautiful. I'm so glad to see it happening and going on. Guitar, man. Let's talk about guitar, dude. Guitar, guitar. Right, let's talk about your guitar. Right now, I got some bankers on tour. I'm, I'm coming out with a, a signature Gretsch Billy Bow, the Behinds Billy Bow. Dude, I got, you got... <laughs> man, I'm nerding out here as a guitar player, man. Yeah. That's awesome. You got to show me some pictures later. And uh, Oh, I will. And I, tonight, I'll be playing like a, ban a banker uh, Iron Man. And I love that guitar, man. Yeah, that, the gold with the flying D headstock. Yes. Yeah. I love it. Sometimes, when you mix shit up in guitars, kind of they look odd. That looks incredibly cool, man. Well, I mean, Gibson did it back in the, the 80s, okay, okay. They, but they did it like very sparingly. You know, oh, they yeah, didn't do yeah. too many of them. I mean, like yeah. Tim Salt had one for from Clutch. I, I remember the and Billy Gibbons Marauder, had one. Marauder headstock kind of was familiar to that, but right. not the body. Right, so right. I'm, I, I'm not that familiar. Man. Yeah. Really. I mean, only only one I ever saw was like when we went on tour with Clutch. Tim Salt had one. He had an old SG with a with a flying B headstock. You know, I mean, I just know Gibson's done it before. They've done it before. You know, yeah. and uh, uh, and Gibson Gibson filed bankruptcy on me. Or not Gibson, but Epiphone filed bankruptcy on me when I had my signature out. So I never even really made any money off that. I, I kind of got shafted on that because like like. They file bankruptcy and give me a W nine or some shit. Like, just let me know that I won't be getting any back money for selling all the guitars. So that was kind of lame. Uh, so I just kind of like, after that, I was like, I just kind of had enough of their bullshit, you know. So I went with my buddies, like my buddy Mike, been, like Tim Pesta. He, he works for Dunlop, Gretsch, Fender. Yeah. Went with Mike with Gretsch, and then I went with Matt Hughes, banker, because. He's my homie, and he builds awesome guitars. And like, why wouldn't I play this guy's guitars? You know? Yeah, man, that's beautiful. Yeah. You keep it. You keep it such a. You keep it everything keep it, like, in the family. Almost independent man. in a while, and you you keep your you know you keep your fucking homies together, bro. Like I mean, I'm telling you. Like, I hear you, man. That's what's I, up. I, I hear you. Like, I, 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 didn't know any, you I didn't know any. I didn't know any of those fucking uh, Epiphone Gibson people, dude. You know what I mean? They they would never get to know me well enough for me to like talk to them like, hey, I need this, I want this, you know. They were just, that was all through my manager, Mick John, who passed away, you know? God rest his Yeah, family. yeah. That was how that all came to fruition, that, that signature from Epiphone in the first place. You know what, you know okay. what I mean? Okay, yeah. So, like, I, I felt not really reciprocated down there at, at the Epiphone. And it's a I, bit of a distance there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Too much of a distance to, to get what I actually need out of them, you know? Like, so I, I need to go, I need to get in where I fit in. I don't need to be, like go into a company that still thinks that Eric Clapton plays Gibson or something, like when they never did, he plays Fender. Right. Yeah, like, I don't know, like, they're just, they're, they're, they're just up slash, and they're just, they're up, they're up, they're, they got their iconic dudes, which is totally, I get it, I get it, but like, I, well, mean, the way like, I, ain't, got, it, I ain't got all day to sit around and wait that. on people, you know? I hear you, I love it, because now you get created a family and type environment, it's, it's like, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, like, your, your all people. you need to do is people. know people. You gotta know people. I never knew anybody at Epiphone. Never knew anybody at Gibson. You meet someone that's a good like rep or whatever, and then and then by the time you double back around to them, they don't even work there anymore. Yeah, you know no, what I mean? No doubt. So Especially it's like today, man. It's impossible. So Go to NAMM even and though I did grow up there. playing Gibson, and that was my all-time uh, favorite guitar growing up. But like through my through my growing, I got to know. 
that camp kind of in, in a way to the point that I was like, man, you don't want to be messing with these guys, man. They, they don't give a fuck about you, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You know, the personal relations that I have with Solar and, and those guys and all of England. And, yeah, and that's how you get your shit done. Yeah, man. We're, we're, all, we're all friends. You know? You're doing like badass like things here. Yeah, yeah. Homie. Homies. Stay in each other's houses, like go out to dinner. Yeah, I mean, and, 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 not just, and not just the guys that, you know, not just Ola, but, you know, the guy who helped me design it, you know, the guy who helped, you know, you know, put the, you know, the pickups, everything. The yeah. whole team that's there. Yeah. Each one of them, even Ola's wife, you know. See, like when I'm doing a guitar with Matt or with, or with, or Gretch, like the, I, I had like Zoom calls with Gretch, people that like listen and they're, reciprocate my ideas and then and then with matt you know he's like you know there, there's a lot involved with like the, what kind of pickups i want how high i want the the pickup bushings to be nice. now, i don't want them all high touching the string i finger pick like that so i don't yeah, that, I, I don't i want them to be lower yeah. so i can feel the string shit like this you know yes makes a huge difference they sound hotter when you drip them low a little bit yeah i mean like oh we're gonna get it out of i mean like you didn't hear shit <laughs> I want to ask you something. Do you have a Chiquita, man? No, no, no. Oh, God. Me neither. I used to have one and let it slip out of my hands in high school. I ain't looking for no Chiquita, man. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know what I'm I talking have about. PTSD. I have Chiquita PTSD. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Like bananas? You're talking about bananas? I'm talking about a guitar. Oh, like, my, my, my. A little guitar. No, it's called Chiquita, but made by, it was by Bill in Austin, I think. And Billy Are there, there Chiquita guitars? Yeah. The same people that make bananas make guitars? <laughs> what are you talking about? I thought you were talking about women. So you don't have a Chiquita guitar? No. <laughs> I just found out about them just now. I mean, I've seen them back in the day, but I didn't know they were called Chiquita guitars. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, not associated with the bananas, but maybe you have Oh, women. Oh, women. Okay. Oh, okay. women. All right. It's a yeah, mini thing. Hey, it's incredible. incredible. Yeah. Oh, no. I, 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 I used to I, have I, one. But yeah. now it's one of those things that are it's like out of, you know, you can't just buy them. Why, why not? Price, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we got to get given them yes. by Chiquita. You know? <laughs> well, I don't know if they exist. No, I don't I think know either. So. I think they fold it. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Look, I got to, you guys go do your research on this company. Because I think. Do research. Yeah. Stevie Ray played them. I saw. Uh, Eddie Van Halen had one. Eddie had the little mini Les Paul. Yeah. And he yeah. would play for little guitars. Yeah, yeah. Tell me about your influences, man. I want to. Uh, just... Chet Atkins, uh, Jerry Reed. Oh my God. Um, Junior Brown. Dude. Like Brian Setzer. Um, like J Joe Walsh. Dude. Billy Gibbons. <laughs> Angus Young. People like this, you know. I. Just. A a a Eddie Van Halen was. Wasn't very influential to me because. I was, I'm like, I think I'm an old soul or something. They can't really get with that 80s thing or whatever. I, I totally understand. But I do love I Eddie Van Halen's guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. I'm man. just not going to try to emulate it because I know it's just way over my head. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, don't, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm out. I don't know about that, but, but the, the list of influences you just mentioned, the first two, they all influenced me too. But for me, Eddie was like God and like, I did try to imitate. Yeah, you, I mean, you I, do a I, great I, job I, at it. No, just, I failed miserably. No, you but, but it's like, but, but look, I love, man, I love Dimebag, too. Like, he was, oh. he was my favorite metal guitar player. Same. I love Zach. Same. You know, Zach Wild. I mean, I love, all the, I love all the greats, dude. 74 or 76, there's a video, and I think it was Jerry Reed's show, and Chet's on it. And they're playing Jerry's Breakdown. And if you've never seen it, go look at it. It's like Jerry, Jerry Reed and Chet Atkins. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah, yeah, it's great, yeah. And if you go really look into it, Especially in that Jerry's breakdown, when they're playing, Chet, when it's Chet's turn, it's kind of crazy because Jerry's playing impossible stuff. It was like on Johnny Carson screaming. or something. No, it's his show, and they were they were sitting there, and he's Jerry Reed's show, and he's playing Jerry's breakdown down there, down there, and he's like hooting and hollering during the hard licks. Woo, boy, son, you know. And yeah. it's like, and then when it comes to Chet's turn, he goes, "Boy, I'm glad it's your turn." They play the turn around, and yeah. then Chet takes over. When Chet takes over, it's like. You know, they're both godly. You got Chet's like actual gods. And then in it, he does sweep off Asia. Like, do you know what Chet does? 
Chet does. Yeah, because Jerry didn't do that. Jerry didn't do that, but Chet does the sweeping arpeggios. If you go look back on YouTube, it's on there. Again, 1974 or 76, he does the double-handed Eddie Van Halen tap. Yeah, yeah. Like Chet Atkins I mean, I love that, that, did that, everything. Like, like, like Muddy Waters and shit like that. Like, I'm into that kind of guitar yeah, playing. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, like, that, dude. like, like. Well, who are some of your, uh, like, down, like, the Texas people like that? Like, well, Stevie like Ray, Lightning. I love Stevie Ray. Love, Lightning Hopkins. love your guitar playing. Love Lightning Hopkins. I mean, you know, love all that. Billy Gibbons, you mentioned Billy oh, I Gibbons. I love Billy Gibbons, man. Come on. How about Eric Johnson? His guitar playing. You're not, okay, I get it. I get it. Like, are you really roots? Roots oriented. I don't like that. Time. I don't like that, Eric Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> That's another guy to me. Look, I, I went and saw him when I was 16. And when I, I had read in Guitar War, Guitar Player, it wasn't even Guitar War, maybe. It was a Bible to me. Like, I didn't care if it was like, uh, you know, uh, the guy, I forget his name now. Uh, he played, he was a, he was a jazz, um, session musician. I forget his name now. Um, from Whoever Texas. was on the cutter, sorry. From, what, from Texas? No, no, he wasn't. He was. He was. A, uh, he was the biggest like session guitar player. I forget his name. And he Brent played. Mason? No. No. He played George like. Benson? No. Stanley Jordan. No. Uh, like the session player. Session player. That played like all the commercials and also played like on the Monkey Song Valerie. Bro, that song has got a ripping guitar. Oh. And I was wondering. I don't know that. I cannot believe I forget this guy's name. Regardless. It was my Bible, right. you know, and I love people like Elliot Easton and like I love everyone that you mentioned because of the organic group. Yeah. And every time I would hear Eric Johnson, it was Billy Gibbons mentioned him and Jeff Watson from Night Ranger and in, in print. Right. I thought Stevie Ray Vaughan, but when I went to go see him, there's a guy that would look like Ellen DeGeneres with a Jimi Hendrix jacket on, <laughs> and he ripped clips of Dover, and I never heard a guitar playing like that in my life. And that was Eric Johnson? Eric Johnson. He yeah. played the song Manhattan and Zap, and I never heard guitar playing like that. Right, right. And he had the roots down, and then he had this jazz fusion shit in him. And I never heard a guitar playing like that. In fact, I went to the school the next day, and I couldn't even talk to my friends anymore. That I had seen somebody that like committed his life to something, yeah. and I was just jacking off and hanging out, doing this. I was like not even throwing frisbees anymore. He made me kind of like, because I'm not school. Yeah, you know he comes from a different family, man. He's like parents were doctors, and he's like plays class. Oh, that Johnson did. Yeah, like he. I like Robert music. Johnson. I love Robert. Like way more than I like Eric Johnson. I know. I get. It. I get it. I like Django Reinhardt. Like I like older guitar players. Yes. For You're some reason, I don't know why. Supremely rooted. I don't like. I think it's not that I don't like Eric Johnson. It's just that what I, what it's I. It's taste. It's a taste. Yeah, the, the, he's too perfect. He's, I, I understand. There's no saying. grip there. I understand. We want, but Jimi Hendrix. Jimi Hendrix, love him. Yeah. Come on. Because there's nothing but grit. Yeah. How about, how about that one note in uh, Machine Gun? I just love people that are, that are, It's you know, it's some people just, they, they just, even though you don't know them, and I'll never meet Eric Johnson, I'll never know him, but, but I'll just always know that it's, it's it's not of the cloth that I'm cut from with my with my my guitar playing like thing, you know. Like I mean, it's it seems like almost too ambitious, like with his playing. It almost kind of reminds me of Joe Bonamassa, and I just don't like that kind of that that Patagonia blues I call it or something. So. Joe, you know, as of late, really has adopted Eric's complete technique. Right. So when I hear him play. He's more bluesy in a sense, but he's adopted that technique. And basically, all it, so I don't want to say all it is, but it's a group, it's pentatonics being moved into groups of five. Right. And then somebody else does it. Eric Gales also does it too. It's an Eric Johnson thing. So I think it's a taste thing. It's a taste thing. I totally get it. And I so appreciate it because there's no, you can't tell me if I don't like, you know, if you hate a banana. It's major sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah I get it. Okay. No minors. I need minors. It's not sad enough. <laughs> Let me ask you something. But shit's going down in your life, and you're down. Are you like me? Do you listen to sadder songs, sad songs to make you feel feel it really? I mean, I. Or do you change? I, your I listen to W. I, I I listen to like avant-garde radio. Like, I just wake up in the morning and I put on like 91.1 Rec Radio or whatever. Or, or, you know, like, 
Georgia Tech or something like you know just like to, just to get these students playing very avant-garde weird shit. You never know what they're gonna play. That's awesome. Man. And uh, very avant-garde. And uh, I don't know why I, I I like to be caught off guard. The element of surprise. I like the element of surprise. I, I don't. It's the best thing if I'm gonna DJ do. myself, I know what I'm gonna play. But I like like to listen to some weird college radio station that's gonna play something like what the fuck is this you know going back to the roots man i want to share something with you a song that i think is pure perfection and it's got the elements of surprise but in ways like like how how did you take this note and make it feedback you know yeah getting feedback at this particular time or whatever right. allman brothers it ain't my cross to bear that thing kills me that i hear it man. yeah i like all from, i love the, i love Dwayne. Dwayne was Dwayne, one of my favorites Dickie. The song Thank kills you. me. Yeah. So give it a listen tonight. Yeah. Like, like that, 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 you know. Yeah, we listen. Your reach of oriented music and influences are absolutely beautiful. And let me tell you, it all comes out in you. You know, Stevie Ray said, you know, when he would give the dude a compliment, he said, all I'm doing is giving it back right. to the blues people that yeah. I got it from. And it almost seems to me that every single person that you just mentioned, you know, prior to me mentioning to a couple of, newer guys i get it it's like all 370s people right I mean, you mentioned django man yeah you know that's incredible that's like yeah. they had their own voice language yeah. angus he had his own language his own voice i love Maybe. the vocabulary that they presented um i'm stuck and and, and that i i can't i mean like i like toast and abbacy and stuff like that as well but like it's not like making me feel something really, you know, I mean, he's, I mean, I met Tosin when he was 15 or 14 and I told him he was going to be Darth Vader of guitar playing one day, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and he is. And he is, yeah. He is, but, he's uh, insane. I mean, huh. Well, Nick, I, did, I, you I, like I, I, did you like Ted? Did you like, for me, Ted was huge. Ted Nugent? Yes. Oh, I love Ted Nugent. I like mean, back huge, in the day, man. you know, huge. back in the day, like, I didn't huge. like it when he became all political and no, started wearing no, camouflage no, no, and no, playing with no, damn Yankees. Yeah, of course, but I mean, I, I always go back to being a kid and going to Houston Summer down here, man, and, and hearing on the radio, the opening tonight, the bunch of kids, 14, 16, the oldest person is 16, it's like Def Leppard on their first album, man, and I, that song Rock Brigade was everything to me, man. So yeah, I went man. and saw Def Leppard, and the Scorpions came out with Animal Magnetism, but then came My God. You know, I didn't smoke or drink because of Ted. You know, he came swinging on a, on a, on a you know, swing. Yeah, like Dan Tarzan. It came down, and the first song. Motor City Madman. Actually, the first song was uh, the, the title of the album he was supporting, Scream Dream, man. Yeah. Oh, I love that song. It's got nothing but dynamics, and he was a screamer. You see, like, like I mean, Little I, Richard. I dig all that. David Lee really. Roth was to me, you know, again, like Janis Joplin. And again, I love raspy kind of vocalists. And, Ted was a screamer. Yeah. I, I love that. I, it was fucking wild. I, mean, I know, I like, like today you can't talk about him because of like, like, uh, I'm talking about my youth. Like, uh, uh, Stranglehold and Free For All Bruh. and, 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 and Cat Scratch, Fever. Come on, I got it from what the girl next door. Band, you know, you know, like, I got it from the girl next door. What a genius. <laughs> I make the person purr with the stroke of my hand. Yeah. Come on, man. Brad, man. Genius. I love you and I thank you for being here, man. Dude, thanks for having me. Seriously. I'm taking it up for your time, man. Let's go enjoy this evening. Oh, yeah, Let's brother. Enjoy your band. Thank you, man. I love Appreciate you. It. Love you, brother. Thank Cheers, you. man. Okay. Thanks for being Cheers. here. Right there in the middle by 11 Inch Gate. <laughs> Thank you.